thing is we saw quarterbacks go in the top 12. That was the most ever taken. So we're going to go through and explain who we think is going to succeed Mm -hmm. or fail and why. So let's start at the top. Number one, Caleb Williams going to the Bears. I think this will work. They are taking a completely different approach to their offense this season. Instead of putting all the pressure on a rookie quarterback, just like, hey, go figure it out, which was kind of what happened to Justin Fields. It was like and they're gi- before him and yeah, yeah. yeah they're they giving him weapons and surrounding him with pieces yes. that will help him succeed. And we saw that Thursday night with the number one pick. Um, instead of getting the edge rusher, as I said, off the top of the show, they went and got a top weapon for Williams with uh, Rome Adunze. And like, obviously, they added Keenan Allen, DeAndre Swift. They have DJ Moore. That There's more of an offensive focus for this Bears team than we have ever seen. No, this like, season. literally in my entire lifetime. I want to give Ryan Poles his flowers because okay. this was a very curated intentional plan that he put in place as yeah. soon as he got to the Chicago Bears. People act like they lucked into the first overall pick after trading with Carolina. Oh, no, if you don't think genius. that Ryan Poles this was, was taking stock, because first of all, the Bears had multiple offers to move down last year from the yeah. number one overall pick, which they earned down to number nine, which ended up being with the Panthers because there was multiple offers and Ryan Poles looks at the Panthers and goes, yeah, I could bet that they're going to have a high first round uh-huh. pick. And sure enough, they got him the number one overall pick. So much so that the Bears having the number one overall pick and Caleb Williams going to the team picking first overall was such an incredibly unique situation also because the Bears did not. Caleb. Yes, the Bears did not warrant the number one overall no, pick. They have year. a better roster than uh-huh. would than most number p- teams picking number one overall yeah. have. So this was a, an opportunity to take advantage of having an actual environment to. St- develop a young quarterback which the bears have never had like you mentioned no, they, before the bears have never had that guy they've never had a guy throw more than four thousand yards in a season but they've, they've never, never had a quarterback set, they've never set that guy that's the thing season. is they never set a guy up for success but to do ever, that ever ever no that's, I'm, I'm talking in about franchise history i'm talking from experience here where it's this insane. entire franchise has had a defensive identity for the last Five, well, six, living, seven you're decades. living in the past, man. Sid Luckman is the last guy that you can hang your hat on as a Chicago Bears quarterback, and that was so long ago that the game has completely changed. So yeah. now you get the fun, you get the flashy football, and Caleb Williams is the definition. We talked, yep. we talked about it, la- you know, last hour is the definition of fun and flashy. And mm-hmm. on paper, this should work. Yeah. Welcome should. to the show, Chicago Bears. I Good job, Ryan. Feel Poles. like you have finally arrived. Good job, Ryan. Poles. to the new NFL. Okay, let's go to the second quarterback taken, yeah. Jaden Daniels, to the Commanders, the Heisman winner out of LSU. This is a lot of new for the Commanders. Yes. They got a new owner, a new coaching staff, new head coach, new offensive coordinator, new quarterback. A lot of new guys on the roster. It's a lot. <laughs> Of new. Now, yeah. they did pick up some new familiar faces. You have Austin Eckler, if he can stay healthy, veteran presence, which is great. But this one's tough for me because there is so much new. It's a lot of positivity. There's a lot of hope. But because everything is so new, I feel like I need to wait a month and see, like, just... Is it gelling? Really new too, the... So yes, yes, this is great. Keep keep expect temper expectations. Different, different expectations. <laughs> this is by no means the same. This is not the same at all, Carmen. I am not no, allowing there's that. Lo- in. No, there's there a is lot more extremely high expectations for the Bears and Caleb Williams. I don't like this. Is new owner, new coaching staff, new quarterback. A lot of new faces on this roster. Yeah. Well, this is like a so full, like, it is rebuild. It is. Stage. And I appreciate, you know, Jaden Daniels is was responsible for all of LSU's success last year because that defense yeah. was horrendous. So Jane Daniels had to go put up 40 to 50 points every single game. And I watched him do it very impressively. He's going to fit right into Cliff Kingsbury's offense. Yeah. Uh, he never went under center at LSU. Jane Daniels didn't. And Cliff Kingsbury doesn't ask his quarterbacks to go under center. So that's great. But yeah. he's going to have Daniels kind of still pushing the ball down the field with the remnants of that air raid offense that Cliff Kingsbury used in college, which he took some of that to go to the NFL. The one concern I have is Cliff Kingsbury trying to make Jaden Daniels into Kyler Murray. Mm. They are two different players. And I think Jaden Daniels absolutely scrambles. Yeah. He is not a running quarterback. That is the differentiation. He is okay. not he 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 knows how to scramble and he will do it. Yeah. But you I like design he's not big enough 
to at the NFL level to design runs for him. Like this kid, this yeah. kid is like I know he weighed in at the combine like over 200 pounds and that was like soaking wet after probably drinking two gallons of water like there's no like he doesn't weigh that much and he's very small so you're gonna have to have a good (laughs) offensive line that can protect him now granted Jane Daniels can't get himself out of trouble he's done that but yeah he has a tendency to look down when he's scrambling and doesn't necessarily see guys open down the field so that's something you're gonna have to coach him up on all that other stuff I just don't want him to I don't want Cliff Kingsbury to make Try to make Jaden Daniels into Kyler Murray. Okay. We'll see. So succeed or fail? I, jury's You're out. with me? Okay. The jury's They're out. I'm, 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 I, I, hey, I'm the queen yeah. of tempering expectations. Yeah. Are you kidding? Yeah, okay. Let, let's see how this all goes. Let's go to number three. Drake May to the Patriots. Yeah. First reaction, I was a little surprised they didn't trade down for a haul because, yes, they needed a quarterback, but they need so many other things, too. They don't have star receivers, star weapons, mm-hmm. protection. Their O-line mm-hmm. ranked 20th last season. Mm-hmm. Defense was middle mm-hmm. of the pack. 15th in points allowed per game. Once again, a lot of new, new head coach and Jared Mayo, who's never been a head coach before. It feels kind of like a similar situation to Mac Jones of like this. I, I think Drake May is in the toughest rookie situation. Oh, yeah. He's basically Bryce Young from last year. Yeah. So I think this is. And like I get. So Jared uh, Mayo was promoted from within. He, this was the succession plan apparently all along. He had language written into his contract that he would succeed Bill Belichick when yeah. he was gone. So you have Make some continuity when that happens. Yeah. But I was begging the Patriots to have a little bit more self-awareness for all of those yes. reasons that you just mentioned. Not to mention, in the stuff that we heard from the Vikings after picking J.J. McCarthy, it very much, reading between the lines, sounded like they were prepared to give the Patriots both of their first-round picks this year and next year's first. That's crazy. So to turn down That's crazy. three first-round picks to then take Drake May, that who is now coming into a terrible situation under so much pressure. I no love weapons, Drake May. No protection. I don't think Drake May is the project that people were making him out to be in the last couple of weeks. I think that was more to get him to fall. Yeah. I think he is a great quarterback with an even higher ceiling. Yeah. But you are not setting him up for success in no. England. I tweeted right after this happened that I was bummed. Yeah. And this is the reason. Because I want to see here. Drake May set up to succeed because yeah. I think that he could be one of these incredible caliber yeah. quarterbacks. But only so much of what determines success in this league for is a quarterback like a supporting cast? is the supporting cast and what situation they go into. And New England just does They don't even they have don't the have bare bones. They don't have anything. They need so much. They need they so needed much. They need a haul. They needed they a need, haul like, and they didn't get it. Turning down three first How? round picks. I don't How? know. I don't know. Uh, okay, let's move on. We don't have <laughs> number. We, we have so we, many quarterbacks we, to get through. So little time. <laughs> I know. But we've okay. We've already talked about this one a bit. Yeah. At number eight, Michael Penix Jr. going to the Falcons. This was the biggest WTF don't get me started again. situation don't get me started again. for most Atlanta fans. But it happened. So let's dive in a little bit because two things can be true in this situation you're gonna use my words against me now Uh this could actually be a great learning situation for Penix to develop even though it's an awkward situation for Kirk Cousins okay I'm not surprised that Penix was a top pick he's a pure pocket passer he has great accuracy he's got a beautiful throw and spin on the ball the weird part of this whole situation is that the Falcons just paid Kirk Cousins $180 million over four years with a $100 million guarantee, and they didn't get the heads up that they were taking a quarterback until they were on the clock. That is the uncomfortable, irresponsible, miscommunication part of this whole situation. The whole thing is irresponsible. So, the whole thing is irresponsible. I'm going to... I'm not going to let you have this without challenging it. Yeah, and I will challenge you right back because now they have two great quarterbacks... At the most important position, you can't play two quarterbacks in the league. At the same time. You can't, but you also have Kirk Cousins, who's an older coming at order quarterback, coming off of the biggest injury that you can come off of late in his career. He hasn't played a game since, and this is this is insurance, as we heard them say. Kirk Cousins is our quarterback now. Penix is the future. Insurance is not a top ten pick. I think this will insurance is not a top work. ten pick. <laughs> I'm going to say this is going to work. No, I'm I, I'm going to say this is going to be horribly, horribly wrong. And I'm so sorry to Michael Penix because this is not his fault. It was not his choice. And I wanted Michael Penix to start right away. He is ready to start now. And I am, I am so much in favor of giving guys time to ease into the NFL. So a bridge quarterback to the Michael Penix Jr. era in Atlanta would have been phenomenal. A plus. Love that. 
This is not that. You do not pay a bridge quarterback $100 million guaranteed. That is not the thing here. And to create a quarterback competition for both <laughs> is going to be a detriment uh. to both. You, there is no way that you did not make things worse for Kirk Cousins by drafting Michael Penix Jr. And there is no way that you play Michael Penix Jr. without something bad happening to Kirk Cousins or taking something away from Michael Penix Jr. later on down the line. It's it's completely like the cap hit that Kirk Cousins has even if Michael Penix Jr. plays in two years, that's going to affect him. Like, this is this is just... T- I, I don't even have words. Okay, because I'm, so you don't think it's going to succeed. I don't, I don't. Let's move on to the next quarterback. At number 10, J.J. McCarthy to the Vikings. This was the first trade-up. One spot. One spot. <laughs> just one little spot. But I could see this working. He's a national champion whose coach, like Harbaugh, had been raving about him. He's coming into a situation that will help him succeed with a lot of good pieces in place. Yep. They have wide receiver depth. They have a good O-line. They were 12th last season. The only hesitation is the NFC North is now a stacked division. Mm-hmm. The Lions proved they are the top team last year. Packers and Jordan Love did well. Bears getting the number one pick and Caleb Williams. Vikings did sign Sam Darnold this offseason, so... Mm-hmm. Is there a world where they sit JJ yes. behind Sam, yes. or is it a straight up quarterback competition here? No, I, no, 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 no. You're not. You're not doing that again with a first round top ten pick. Uh, what you're doing <laughs> is you're bridging the Kirk Cousins era with the JJ McCarthy era, and you are letting Sam Darnold be the guy to start, so you can ease JJ in because JJ does need reps. Yeah. He needs development. He is the project, but he has the traits that Minnesota really liked. And he's coming into a situation where you have a former quarterback and head coach, you have a former quarterback as your quarterback's coach. Mm -hmm. You also have tons of weapons, Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, TJ Hawkinson, Aaron Jones now. You have a good offensive line and you got a defense that could potentially be top five, especially with the addition of Dallas Turner now. So you can ease him into this situation when you feel like he is ready. This is the exact situation in Minnesota is what you want for your young rookie quarterback. You could not... I think that that situation is even better than the Bears situation. The Bears situation Whoa. is the best a first overall pick has come into. Yeah. The the situation but in Minnesota is the best situation like a rookie quarterback. team to help him succeed Absolutely. Situation? This is the best... Of, the, of this draft, this is the All best right. situation a quarterback is coming into is in Minnesota. I think this is absolutely going to work. Okay. And I think it's going to take a little bit of time. Yeah. But in the long haul, the Vikings Vikings are going to be better for it because while they may, there was rumors they wanted Drake May. Yeah. While they may not have gotten their ideal quarterback, they got the ideal situation when they got to get J.J. McCarthy and Dallas Turner. Yeah. That now opposite of Jonathan Grenard, that the, who they got from the Texans this offseason in free agency, 12 and a half sacks last year. So now you're going to pair another guy on the other side of him, another first round pick, potentially the first... You know, the, yeah. the best defensive player in the draft. Yeah. I love it. I love okay. it so much. Good Real job, quick, Vikings. one more. At number 12, Bo Nix to the Broncos. Now, this was one of Carmen's, if you were listening in the first hour, WTF moments because mm-hmm. she does not believe that Bo Nix should be a top 12, 12 pick. quarterback. Will he succeed? I think yes. He has the most college experience out of any quarterback prospect this year, 61 games. In his last season at Oregon, he was second in passing yards, most passing touchdown, a Heisman finalist, and Sean Payton now has his guy. Bo Nix fits the offense that Sean Payton likes to run, and this is Sean Payton's chance to show and prove he can do what he came to Denver to do. A lot of comps between Bo and Drew Brees, which is Payton's bread and butter. If he can be even a fraction of what Breeze was, I think they will succeed. Yeah, if he can. If he can. If he can. So his experience in college, though, I also feel like works as a detriment to Sean Payton wants to mold him. Sean Payton yep. wants to make him into the next Drew Breeze. Sean Payton has the ego to think that he can do so. Well, now Bo Nix is going to have to unlearn things from college and relearn them under Sean Payton. Yeah, can but Sean like, Payton isn't that, that what like any college quarterback is doing once you get to the NFL? Unless like, get, it's a different unless game. Unless you get a guy like JJ McCarthy who is very, very raw and needs re- and needs reps and is actually mo- like mo- mold- moldable. moldable. There it is, moldable. moldable. Try saying that five, five times fast. I like Bo Nix as a quarterback. Please do not get me wrong. He yes. is a good quarterback. Yeah, and yeah, if yeah. this was two years ago, he would have absolutely been probably the first quarterback taken off the board. But I just can't get on board with him being a top 12 pick and also being asked to be the guy in Denver because who else do you have, Zach Wilson? That's that's tough. Yikes. Yikes. <laughs> so I'm going to say no. I don't think it's going to go well. Um, I'm going to give uh, Sean Payton the benefit of doubt and Ooh, say all yes. Right. All right. 